Well, who'd have thought it would be easier with the national team than the club side? Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Dodgy Gamer here with episode 56 of Andorra, Andorra, the double challenge, in which I take charge of the club, FC Andorra, and the country of Andorra, and try to lead them both along the road to glory. We'll come back to FC Andorra next time. Today we're focusing on international action. We're back in the midway point of our World Cup qualifying program. So last time you would have seen that glorious 7-0 victory over San Marino. We followed it up with an even more glorious victory. I wish I had kept this one in for that episode as well. It was a way to Bulgaria, who, you know, we have we have triumphed over Bulgaria before, and we went off and did it again. Three, two winners. Away as well. Sofia. I mean, they scored very early on. But we got back into it before half time, thanks to Zarzana. Yet again. Then Martin. He put us in the lead. They pulled back. And then look at that. Oh, a sweet, sweet stoppage time winner. That meant we were actually top of the group after those two games. Didn't last long, of course. We had the two toughest games of the group in June. This coming on the back of FC Andorra's fall from grace in La Liga. And it was 4-1 away to Ukraine. Not a pretty match at all. Zarzana did get in there with a the goal. You'll see we had Gonzalez sent off just before half-time, which didn't help. We were only 1-0 down at that point, but they just overran us in the second half. And then we went to Wembley to take on the mighty England. Unfortunately, as you can see, they did put out some big names. Harry Kane with a hat-trick, Alexander-Arnold with a goal, Phil Fodder and Joe Gomez all getting on the score sheet. And yeah, it was a bit of a rout. So, that means at present... We're fourth in the group, which is, you know, pretty good. I mean, you would have said, looking at the group beforehand, that we're probably going to finish fifth. So to be in fourth at this stage is pretty good. Ahead of Bulgaria and San Marino. Level with Greece in third place. So today's game at home to Greece could catapult us further up the group table. OK, so we're sticking with this formation. It beat Bulgaria and it thrashed San Marino as well. Um, now we'll get on to the FC Andorra stuff in the next episode, as I said, but we've got here Gomez, who is now in the FC Andorra first team. So actually the back line, we've got Hernandez, Gomez and Ruben Perez, I've this season promoted to the first team squad. I mean, he's not a regular starter for FC Andorra, as you might guess, but he's uh, a useful squad player to have. Gomez, as you can see, had a season out on loan in the second division last season, so I think he's developing nicely. And of course, we've got Perez in there. We've got Zarzana, who's now back at FC Andorra B. Haven't organised a loan move for him yet. So Greece going uh, 4-1-4-1 on us. Of course, they're the favourites. Uh, we've played them twice before. You might remember we played them in the previous qualifying pool. They beat us both times. I think it was 2-0 in one game and 3-0 in the other. So we weren't thrashed by any means. We'll see. Can can we pull off a you know the same kind of performance that we put in against Bulgaria? Or will it be more like the performance that we um, we put in against England or something like that? Okay, we've got faith in you. Get out there, get us some points. So the team's come out ready for the kickoff. World Cup qualifying action places at the 2026 tournament at stake. We're probably not going there, um, but it's an early Greece attack, and we're certainly not going there if we're going to be playing like this. Restos heading in off Bruno's free kick. Four minutes in, and we're a goal behind already. Right, not much action. We're now halfway through the first half, and we've got another... Attack from the Greeks. Ooh, Donis there, being a bit cheeky, got to the byline, didn't shoot from there, pulled back inside and then shot, but luckily for us, it was straight at the keeper. And no one running up. They seem to be content, the Greeks, to kind of sit back on their lead as we approach half-time. So it's only 1-0 down. No chances for us yet. Oh, no, it's Greece. They're going to rub the rub it in. No, they've won a penalty. Hernandez, come on, you're supposed to be the experienced head in the team. 
but we've given away a penalty right before half time and we're now 2 nil down with a mountain to climb right so we're definitely telling them that we're not happy with that we want something else out there in the second half any particular standout poor performers yeah in midfield pale martin is not doing too well yeah, very low pass completion. We're not getting many crosses in from the right either. I mean, I did tell them to focus their play on the left more because that's where we've got Perez, who's doing a decent job. But the strikers are just not doing anything with it. We can see from the heat map that we're not really getting out of our own half. So we'll take off time wasting. We're going to up the tempo a bit and make our passing play a bit more direct to try and solve that problem. We'll hit some early crosses, make them low because Zarzana has the pace to kind of take advantage of that. I'm just going to push our line up a bit as well for this half. Okay, and it looks like we've got an attack. Zarzana sends the ball in. It's dealt with quite easily by the Greek defence, but we've still got the ball. No, we haven't. <laughs> right? We've given it straight back to the Greeks. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always the way in international games. Um, okay. The Greeks look like they're going to build the attack up. It's not going to be a you know quick counter from us. And oh, dearie me. Dearie me. Donis. Adonis. He thinks, he thinks he's a god. Amongst men, he scores a fluky, fluky goal. Ah, that's just such a shame. So early in the second half. Oh, that is a cross. Not a shot. But it's gone in. Well, we've got a highlight straight from the kickoff, so can we pull one back straight away? I mean, we're 3-0 down now. We're probably not getting a result today, unfortunately. And hopefully we're just not going to get a humiliation. Gomez, you've just got yourself sent off. You don't want us to win today, do you? Oh, red card for the young centre-back. That is not good at all. Right, so obviously we're going to have to pull one of the strikers off. Have Zarzana up front on his lonesome and who have we got to bring in i guess it's gonna have to be max Uera coming in at center back yeah, and they're just gonna have to get creative now to get back into this game at all now yeah it is a bit about damage control isn't it i probably want to take this off positive as the greeks are surely now just going to mercilessly pick us apart there we go donis adding a fourth Right, Gomez was booked right at the start of the first half and then right at the start of the second half, so he obviously got pumped up a bit too much in the dressing room. Anyway, here we go. Perez knocking one to Zarzana. Zarzana with the shot. Great goal. Great goal. He's been scoring the goals in this qualifying campaign, has Zarzana. You'll have seen in the review there, he got one against Ukraine as well. He scored against San Marino, of course, and Bulgaria. I mean, look at that. Just took advantage of that. Just got a little... Bounce back off the defender. Knew exactly what he wanted to do with it. So that's great to see. All right, there was an extra little review there to see if it was offside or not. They decided it was not. But good, good little mini burst of life from us. All right, made our last couple of substitutions. We brought on Lega and Huang Guinea. Hopefully they can do a little bit of something for us. Lega did get involved there, but unfortunately... The ball out of defence uh, just went straight to the Greeks. Oh, come on, come on, boys, give us something here. That's uh, you know, don't don't lose like five or six one, please. All right, good. It's headed over. Whew. All right, well we kept the score down in the end, only a four-one defeat. Unfortunately, that does kind of cement us into fourth place. It seems from the scores that were coming up that Bulgaria were defeated by England, so remain below us. I will tell the team that that was disappointing, though. And um, disenchanted Max Rivera. He, got, he came on as a sub. I don't know what, what made him disenchanted. Bloody hell, Ukraine didn't hold back, did they? 14-0 win away to San Marino. San Marino also with a man sent off at a similar time to ours, but man, they really hammered them. Okay, so I criticised Gomez in the press conference for his red card. Little bug, I've noticed here, and I'm wondering about this. I don't know if it's to do with having the same players for my club and country, but Gomez, um, I've got a message here from the FC Andorra player liaison officer, that Gomez has accepted his fine. 
and um, as part of the club's code of conduct, he's been fined half a week wages, even though he was sent off in an international game and not a club game. Right, so now I'll just fast forward. I won't show you the San Marino game because we've done a lot of San Marino games in this series already. I'll show you the result and then we'll have a look at where we're going from there. All right then, so we got the win. Back to winning ways. 3-1 away to San Marino. A little bit disappointed to have conceded and we didn't really push on much in the second half. Bit of a non-event of a second half. Look at that. England beat Greece 7-0. Ooh. Ukraine getting the win as well. So if we take a look at the table, yeah, we basically um, <laughs> end that round of fixtures where we started it in fourth place, uh, just behind Greece on the same points, but separated by goal difference, of course. San Marino with a minus 51 goal difference now. Ooh. So next round of fixtures, Bulgaria and Ukraine, and we finish off with Greece away and England at home. So I think England at home will be the next international episode to round off the qualifying campaign and to give you guys a look at what the England team of 2025 looks like in this particular save. Ah, should have checked on this sooner. Perez did go off injured in that San Marino game. Broken ribs two to three months out. That's going to have a big bearing on the FC Andorra season. Well, that Perez uh, injury has definitely put a downer on, you know, another international win, a third international win of the qualifying campaign. Well, we're going to have to deal with that in the next episode, which will be a return to club action with FC Andorra. But for now, well, thank you very much for watching. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed today's episode. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm Dodgy Gamer, and I'll see you back at the club soon.